My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. And it's kind of our mid-morning right now. But thank you for being here. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. So, so I'm currently in Brisbane, Australia. Uh, it's 5 a.m. here, hence yeah, the very dark background behind me. Um, I am a personal trainer and a health coach. And I focus on a lot of mindset training in conjunction with um, physical health training too. So my first question comes in. Um, I feel like fitness and, 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 and being a trainer on Instagram is more like modeling and slash fitnessing because you gotta you are the representation of your you know practice. But my main question comes in this. If that's the case and there's so much content out there, especially on Instagram, why most people are not achieving their goals? Or are most people achieving their goals? I it's honestly it's I think there is too much information out there and there is no one right answer. So something that would work for someone won't work for someone else. And not only that, maintaining a good health and a, a good mind and a good body takes work and it takes effort. And people get complacent. They get comfortable and they don't put in the effort and then they don't realize that as we get older, things change. Some things start to not work for us. Um, they'll look back, oh, I did this 20 years ago and this worked for me. What you did 20 years ago or 10 years ago, or even like a year ago, might not work for you now because your lifestyle's changed, um, things, other aspects of your life has changed. You might not be as mentally resilient as well. So you might not be able to put as much oomph into your sessions. And not only that, a lot of people aren't focusing on um, how your mind can actually affect the way that you train and the intensity that you train in as well. And then some people, what I find, actually turn to overtraining and therefore they have a stressed lifestyle and they add on a stressed workout, for example, like a nice hit workout that just goes and goes and goes. That's another stressor on the body. And as a result, and not only that, we have accessible, so we are accessible to so many different types of food now that are unhealthy for us. So accessibility of unhealthy food and lack of awareness. How much of our, how much our mental, I mean, in order for you to be an entrepreneur and, and a businessman, I would think you would want to put good stuff in your body so you could perform better because that's like your fuel. If you put garbage in, chances are, I mean, we're very adaptive as a human being, our body and everything, it will adapt. You still will be able to perform. But are you performing at the peak level? I think that's questionable, but I'm not a scientist. I'm not a biologist. No. I don't know how that works, <laughs> but I know it works. I know the end result. Yeah. So um, I've, I listen to um, Tom Lilly, um, a bit of Gary V, and both of them, they hate exercising, but they do it because they know it's beneficial. And they do it because they know that when they do it, they're going to perform at their peak because they're going to be more switched on mentally. If they eat better, they'll be able to digest food, they'll be able to sleep better. And not only that, they'll be able to move better. So in the end, it helps them in their pursuit of what they're doing. Okay. But my other question is this, if there's entrepreneurs and business owners out there, being fit doesn't mean having a six pack, correct? No, hundred percent. Not definitely not. So having a six pack is a reflection of your body fat percentage, not of your fitness. So if you have a look at um, all your bodybuilders and I've done um, bodybuilding comps and everything like that, we are not fit people. And when I say fit, I mean like cardiovascular aerobic fitness. Um, well, a majority of us aren't because our focus is on building as much muscle. And in conjunction with a lot of cardiovascular trainings that people, if you look at um, your long distance runners, your long distance cyclists, a lot of them actually aren't built like bodybuilders because their training style is different. So just being fit um, also has so many different um, uh, definitions in people's minds. So for me, fitness is a little bit of cardio health with a lot of strength training. But for someone's other fitness, it could be um, being able to run 10K. Like for me, running 10K sounds like a horrible thing to do, <laughs> but people do it. So fitness means something different to everyone. And I think that's why there's such a disparity between w why people are fit and why people aren't fit because they don't know what fit is for them. Got it. So if you had to put, let's say, let's, if you had to, 
for the sake of argument, you have to categorize it. Would you say your diet is first, exercise and training and physical movement or your mindset? If you had to work with a person that just walked into the gym and they're like, Jessica, I want you to be my trainer. Which one of these three is the most important one, in your opinion, for their success? Not the way they look and everything else, for the end result. Oh, it has to be their mind because they have to want to do it. And if they don't want to do it, they're not going to commit what's meant to be committed to actually perform at even a mediocre level because – I can give them a program, I can give them plans, I can say, go eat this, go eat that, go train this, go train that. But if they don't want to do it and they don't do it to the right intensity, then they're not going to be able to. And not only that, I think after that, nutrition, everyone thinks, is like the, the key thing. However, if you can't move well, like nutrition and training always come in conjunction and it depends on your level of like your body state when you come to me. But nutrition affects things like sleep, mood, digestion, but then your training. If you can't move well, then you're most likely going to cause yourself some sort of injury. And not only that, when you get into your later years in life, if you don't have the bone density and the bone strength there, as well as the muscular strength around the bones, and if you fall over, you're going to injure yourself even more. So I think definitely it's the mind that comes first. So I've done a Bachelor of psychology, uh, Psychological Science, so I know a little bit about it. Um, so if you don't have that there, you don't know why you're wanting to be fit, you're not going to do it. And you're not going to stick to it. It's not going to become a habitual thing. So I do it because I know that it's going to be a benefit, not just for me now, but for later in life. And your most successful people know that, that they might hate doing exercise, they might hate doing weights, or they might hate doing anything, but they know it's going to benefit them in the way that they perform on a daily basis. Got it. So, okay, my other question for you is this. What are the top two hardest things that personal trainers go through themselves? What's the hardest thing for the personal trainers? Uh, one, developing a business <laughs> because at the moment the market is so saturated and not only that, you're competing with uh, people of large influence that might not have any education in the area um, and also, not only that, there's no one white right way of doing something so you might say do this way to someone else and they go and do something else and it benefits them it's because well they obviously resonated with that way of doing stuff so they did better so there's no right answer and also the probably the second most thing is you're not just a physical trainer like you need to be able to empathize you need to be able to relate you need to be able to build a relationship with these people so if you aren't some sort of people person, your love of fitness and your love of training and your love of coaching isn't going to marry up because you're not going to resonate with the people that you want to at the level that you want to. Yeah, I probably will not be a good physical trainer because I'll be like going too hard with people. Like, you know, you're way too nice. I've seen some of your videos. You're just way too nice. There's no way I could that's do that. That's in my videos. <laughs> that's in your videos. Okay, well, not, that's a good you're answer. You're not meant to be an asshole. You're meant to challenge them. You don't have to be rude. Some people will um, respond, though, to hard that kind of hard training. And when that calls for it, yeah, I step up and I say, well, unfortunately, no, you're going to have to do another set, do another rep, um, or hold on, this is not coming for us. Or it's like you need to know when to pull back and you need to know when to put on the pedal with certain people. However, a hard workout doesn't necessarily mean an effective one. Got it. I appreciate that. Listen, Jessica, there's a lot. I, I, I probably can come up with about 50 questions that I have because I see so many coaches on Instagram and I always dissect their IG pages and I look at it, see what's going on, how they're doing differently, how they're adapting to our circumstances. And at the same time, who's definitely, it shows after me going through your page, it shows that you actually care because a lot of times that naturally comes out. You can't fake it. If you don't want to help people and get results, it just, you can fake one or two or three, five, but over a span of period of like six months, one year, two years, you just can't fake those things. You either are there for the students to succeed or you're just there for the business or the money or whatever. Now, that doesn't mean you can't make money. I'm just saying that it shows that you're not, your caring is not number one. It's more like income. So thank you so much for you taking this time and being here. I'm looking forward. When are you coming out with your own book? 
my own book. God, I'll go ahead and write first. <laughs> so when are you going to start your writing? Because, listen, to me, somebody needs to come. I'm looking for a book or a manuscript or, or, or a workbook, whatever you want to call it. Debunking all the myth that people have. Like all of these wrong information and data that's given to people via social media, Instagram, Google, whatever. It doesn't matter what the source is. Your friends, acquaintances, whatever. So many people have the wrong idea. And I give you one of those because I wanted to share with everybody was that I always thought in order for you to be fit, it had to do with the amount of time you went to the gym till I actually wanted to lose some weight. And I realized I could lose weight without actually showing up to the gym. It was what yeah. I was putting in my mouth had nothing to do with me going to the gym. Obviously, gym will take it to the next level and everything else. But yeah. for me, in my mind, losing weight was equal, it, it was equal to going to the gym. So if I can't go to the gym, I can't lose weight. But that was a yeah. big disconnect right there. And the reason why I said that is because all the information that I got out there was like that. So I think someone should come up with that book of, of just, you know, cleaning up all the garbage. Just giving people the raw, yeah. good but data. The only thing with that is, is there's, there's no one right, right way of doing things. And what works for you, what might not work for someone else as well. But a lot of people need to learn how to, one, know what foods and what exercises work for them. Know that it's going to be challenging. And not only that, you can do so much without actually having a gym there. And you can obviously see with this COVID-19, there's going to be either some really fit people come out of this or some really overweight people come out of this. I think the people who never step foot in a gym because they're confined to their space, they're going to be moving more. So they're increasing their non-energy activity thermogenesis. So they're neat. So they're going for walks every day now um, as opposed to not before. And the people who are used to going to the gym have they've had that stripped away and therefore they're not going to the gym anymore, they're probably going to gain a little bit of weight. But it, that'll switch when we go back to normal. So... Everything's different. There is definitely an opportunity to write a book. However, at the same time, I'm dealing with people who are also doing scholarships, also doing other things like that. So I'll write pieces of content, but maybe a book. We'll see. Awesome. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, you know, for parents, changing diapers before the walk, changing the diapers after the walk, pushing stroller, taking care of the baby, taking all of their stuff on the walk. It's a, it's a whole entire... Listen, you just... If you don't have time for gym, make two babies. You walking those two babies and changing diapers, you're going to lose oh. a lot of weight. You don't have time to watch TV. You can't be on the couch anymore. I don't even remember the last time I sat on the couch for 15 minutes continuously without getting overdue. So <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying go have to. Being a parent is like one of the most easiest way to lose that. So a lot of um, moms who do like your bodybuilding stuff, they respond really well because – they're constantly moving all day. Like, and as soon as you stop doing that, then your baseline uh, metabolic rate decreases. So have babies. <laughs> <laughs> that, my wife is not going to like this, uh, this conversation. She's <laughs> like, why are you telling people to have babies? It's their choice. Anyway, I think having kids is fantastic. So listen, Jessica, thank you so much for taking this time. Five o'clock in the morning for being with us. I appreciate that. Definitely looking to collaborate with you. And whenever you come out with that piece of article, whatever that is, let me know. I want to share it with all of our audience. Thank you so much well, for being here this morning. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You got Bye. it. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.